Imagine what a successful growth strategy looks like. Very squishy question. But in the end, you know, selecting your market, how strategically important is that market? I mean, I don't know. I'm an American, so I'm biased, but I know there's a ton of exits that happen in the US. So if you don't have a US client or some relevance to that market, I don't know, maybe you'll exit through an Israeli company or a European com company, but I view that alone as being a good enough reason to figure that market out to me. Um, so payoffs versus costs, your ability to exploit that market. Are you in a position where you can actually do something about it if you figure it out? What's the total uh, addressable market? Um, skills, speed of network, these are basic things. And we've talked about some different examples and how the maturity of the market also matters. And the more mature it is, the more badass you have to be about your differentiation and not just sitting in a laboratory talking about it with your smart colleagues, but getting out and talking to your clients in the market. Why to be global? I think there's a ton of compelling reasons why to be global. Again, um, there's some reasons why not to be. I mean, the biggest thing I like is learning the diverse needs of your customers around the world and baking that into your architecture. Um, there's lots of other things. So um, we're going to move on. Being global, what does it actually mean in this era of COVID? Um, well, I don't think it means having to be physically places. I, I don't think that that is required. Um, but having a market presence, having customers, um, having a distributed team. How many people have 90% of their employees are in their office, their local the office that they work in? 90%, 90%. How many people? So keep your, everybody put your hands up, actually. Everyone put your hands up that has a, a startup that they work at. Everyone that's working at a startup or a technology firm. Um, hands up, guys. And you, you too. You guys know? Okay. Yeah. All right, keep your hands up. So if you have 90% of the people in your office right now, uh, then take your hands down. Okay, if you have 70% of the people in your home office, then hands down. 60%, 50%, 40%, 30%. Okay, you so mean, interesting. You mean home? You're, well, well, in one office, one regional office. Yeah, like a Warsaw, like a building and you've got people there. Um, anyway, there's no question that um, dispersed teams are becoming more of a thing and um, supply chains. So it may be that you're, uh, you know, you're producing globally, like, I don't know, Target or Walmart. You know, these guys are getting stuff from around the globe and they sell it locally. So they're, you know, they got a global supply chain and a local sales thing. Your capital base, and what I think is uh, actually probably one of the most important areas is the mindset. Do you have a global mindset or not? And a global mindset has a relevance because it allows you to see things in the market. It allows you to see opportunities in the market. It also allows you to create a culture in your business. It makes you an attractive place to work. It makes people want to come and be a part of your company. Um, so. Being global, so why be global? What does being global mean to you? Um, and what will your global company look like? Why don't you guys talk to each other, pick a person next to you, talk a little bit about these things. You know, for you, what does is, what is being global mean to you? And uh, what will your company look like in three years? So go ahead and take a couple minutes and talk about that. So who would like to share what their company will look like Three years from now, anyone? What do they envision for their company? Come on, this is your baby. This is your. Yeah, we want to be a leading supply chain software tool, vendor tool. Yeah. I'm assuming uh, the global dominant law platform for XYZ. Or does, I'd say, well, we want to be the number one for management platform in non English seeing markets. Okay. Which can you start? Global domination. Right. Any other? You know, the number one player in your category globally, of course, or two or three. I mean, top five, let's say top three to five. Uh, if you're not, if you're not looking to become a top three to five, category player in the planet, you should go do something else, honestly. The next three years, right? Yeah, the next three years. Okay, the next three years. Okay, right. Um, okay, so 
lots of ambition in this room. Lots of ambition in this room. The fact that you guys are where you are speaks volumes. When to physically be there? So if anyone's read the Index Ventures ebook on internationalizing, oh boy, I loved reading that thing. I was like, oh my gosh, someone's actually like put on paper a lot of the things I, I, I intuitively feel, but I can't explain very well. And they explained it this way. They said, when do you physically go globally? Well, um, and, and preempt, get preemptive. So get in the face of your prospects, have them learn about you in the right way. So um, first there's the boots on the ground. How many people do you have to have on the ground to sell, deploy, support your customers? So an IoT company, for example, we needed to have electricians with screwdrivers that actually could like install something on a, a telephone tower, a cell tower or a utility substation. Um, uh, what's the total addressable market in that geography? You know, is it, Small or is it big? Well, if it's a big addressable market, it's a growing market and it's low boots on the ground. So you don't need to have people that sooner that you do it, the better. That's how I see it. Now you don't have to go crazy with it, but you do need to create your team as soon as possible and get them doing this work in parallel to all the other important work you're doing. Don't stop what you're doing, keep doing what you're doing, but carve out a parallel track. Don't be sequential, be parallel. It's equally good, it's actually better. And test and analyze your thoughts and you can actually then move into an at scale sales uh, support, uh, sales deploy and support model remotely. You can do a lot of it remotely. And, and you guys in Poland, you, you know most of this because you guys are really good at, I think, at doing this international stuff. If you're going into a market that has low total addressable market and high boots on the ground requirements, well, anchor where you are, keep doing what you're doing. At some point along the way, maybe in your series A or your series B, you can really dedicate that team. I mean, in any case, it's gonna be the same initial half a year for these guys as it is for these guys. It's, it's a small team, they're getting out into the field, they're collecting purposeful stuff. They're drilling into those double drill downs of the questions in the executives' heads in those foreign markets and identifying competitors they didn't realize were there that are substitutes for them, maybe even have a different architecture. Some people perceive it as a better architecture, a more long-term architecture. You gotta battle with that. You gotta sharpen your swords and be able to battle with it. So you can see that there's different scenarios. Um, if you are, you know, it's a high market, but requires, um, well, let's take the, the low boots on the ground, but a small market, then you wanna be differentiating, differentiating your product because, you know, eventually you're definitely gonna be there. You're gonna to need to focus there, but by the time you get there, there may be a ton of competition. So there's different ways of thinking about how and when you engage a market and you get into the physical side, sorry, the physical side, and to me, what I like about this is it points back to what we're talking about here today, which is go out and get your act together and, um, and adapt your business a bit. I, I also wanna say as an American guy, look, I mean, the developing, you know, the emerging markets, like three to four X growth. So Latin America, and, you know, I mean, the US of course is not the, the, the only market. Europe's not the only market. Those are the markets that I focus on. Okay, but there's, there's obviously a ton of opportunity out there in the geography. Um, so, so in terms of the idea of, you know, selecting a market, there are, you know, it's somewhat intuitive, but there's certain characteristics. Um, there's a bunch of reasons why you'd want to do it in a way, you know, if you're in the startup business and you're trying to get returns to your investors, five X in five years, which is what they want, then you got to be international. There's just no way. But the mindset is really key thing understanding how uh, boots on the ground play into your sales process, your implementation process is important. 